The story of the Holy Grail is steeped in mystery and enigma, weaving its way through the tapestry of Western European mythology with an allure that has captivated imaginations for nearly a millennium. The legend of the Grail has been recounted in languages as diverse as Welsh, French, German, English, and even Hebrew, each telling its own version of this elusive relic. The Grail has taken on many forms the chalice used at the Last Supper, the cup that held Christ's blood, the Welsh Celtic cauldron of Ceridwen, and a magical platter belonging to the 6th century Welsh King Rhydadach of Strathclyd. The term Grail itself is derived from the Latin Graidale meaning by degree, or in stages often referring to a dish or platter brought forth during a feast. Yet, no matter its guise, the Holy Grail is invariably linked to nourishment, granting those who behold it whatever food and drink they desire and possessing immense healing powers. Our tale begins with the earliest surviving manuscript of the Grail legend, the 12th century Conte del Grail, the story of the Grail by Chrétien de Troyes. In the depths of a mystical forest, the young and naive knight Percival stumbles upon the enigmatic Fisher King. A wounded ruler and guardian of the Grail, Percival is drawn into a surreal and hauntingly beautiful procession. Youths, their faces shrouded in mystery, carry precious and otherworldly objects. Amidst them is a maiden of unparalleled beauty, her presence radiant and ethereal, bearing a chalice of fine gold that gleams with the brilliance of a thousand precious stones. This chalice, the Grail, holds a single host, sufficing to sustain the Fisher King in his wounded state. The story unfolds further with Robert de Boron of Burgundy's trilogy of poems Joseph D. A. Remartha Merlin and Persaville written between 1202 and 1212. De Boron delves into the origins of the Grail, borrowing from the apocryphal, 4th century Gospel of Nicodemus. He tells of Joseph of Arimathea, who used the Grail to catch Christ's blood as he was taken down from the cross. Joseph, guided by divine vision, brings the Grail to Britain, establishing a legacy that would echo through the ages. In the prose Lancelot written around 1215 to 1230, the Grail is referred to as the saint Grail, a pun on the old French words saint Grail royal blood and saint Grail holy Grail. This narrative introduces the concept of a priestly order devoted to serving the Grail in a secluded and sacred place, far removed from the mundane world. The legend grows darker and more complex with Wolfram von Eschenbach's Parzival dating from the early 13th century. Von Eschenbach diverges from his predecessors infusing the tale with his unique and strange variants. He describes the Grail not as a chalice, but as a gemstone of unparalleled beauty and power, known as Lapius Exilis the Grail Castle, shrouded in legend and mystery, is said to lie in Spain. An evil wizard named Klingzor casts some malevolent shadow over the tale, his dark powers challenging the very essence of the Grail's purity. Parzival, the young and earnest knight, embarks on a harrowing quest filled with peril and wonder. His journey is a labyrinth of trials, testing his spirit and resolve, all while the fate of the wounded Fisher King, Amfortus, hangs in the balance. Amfortus's sins and grievous wounds have turned the once fertile earth into a desolate wasteland, a land that can only be healed through the Grail's divine intervention. The legend takes another dramatic turn with Sir Thomas Mallory's La Morte d'Ether, written in 1485. In Mallory's account, the Grail appears suddenly in Camelot, its presence both awe-inspiring and ominous. The Knights of Arthur's Round Table, driven by a sense of duty and divine calling, vow to embark on the ultimate quest to find the Holy Grail. This quest, however, proves to be a double-edged sword weakening Camelot and exposing the inherent human flaws and sins that would ultimately lead to the realm's downfall. Lancelot, the greatest knight in the world, is haunted by his sins and cannot attain the Grail. His son, Galahad, pure and untainted, succeeds in claiming the Grail but pays the ultimate price, dying immediately after his divine encounter. Percival, too, beholds the Grail, only to succumb to death shortly thereafter. Only Bors, the loyal kinsman, husband and father, sees the Grail and lives to tell the tale, returning to a Camelot forever changed, its strength sapped by its brush with sanctity. In the end, a divine hand lifts the Grail from Earth, transporting it to heaven, its purpose fulfilled. The tale of the Holy Grail continues to inspire and intrigue through the centuries. C.S. Lewis's novel that hideous strength 1945 features a mister. Fisher King, 
a descendant of a Pendragon line of kings, his lineage a testament to the enduring power of the Grail's legacy. In Marion Zimmer Bradley's The Mists of Avalon 1983, the Grail is reimagined as a vessel carried by a priestess of the old religion, a symbol of ancient and mystical power. Susan Schwartz is the Grail of Hearts. 1991 offers a deliberately heretical account, challenging traditional interpretations and casting the Grail in a new and controversial light. Richard Wagner's 19th century opera Parsifal and the 1991 novel and film The Fisher King continue to explore the Grail as a symbol of redemption, each retelling adding new layers to this timeless and ever-evolving legend.